Many people are concerned by the announcement that the United States would send 31 Abrams tanks to Ukraine to assist Ukrainian forces against the Russian invasion. However, it is unknown which M1 Abrams type will be deployed to Ukraine, M1A1 or M1A2. Given Russia's muted reaction to the U.S. decision to deliver Abrams to Ukraine, there appears to be Russian leadership confidence that the Abrams will not constitute a substantial strategic danger. Not to mention the recent selection of Russian Chief of Staff General Valery Gerasimov, a tank specialist, as commander of the Ukrainian battle, may be in preparation for an impending tank war in Ukraine. Another indication of Russia's preparedness to combat Western tanks, notably U.S.-made Abrams tanks, was the distribution of a graphic displaying the weak sections of the Abrams tank and providing a set of instructions on how to assault the tank Russian netizens. As a consequence of the revelation, an image demonstrating the vulnerability of the American-made M1 Abrams tank has emerged on social media, along with directions on how to assault the tank and what weaponry to employ. The image above is fairly old and well-known in the Russian blogging community, and it is accompanied by extensive explanations of how to destroy or damage an Abrams tank. There are many directions in the graphic, the first of which suggests assaulting the tank's navigation system or main cannon using light weapons or slash and machine guns. The second instruction is about the enormous gap between the hull and the turret, while the third is about the hull side base, which can be breached even with earlier grenades for RPG-7 grenade launchers like PG-7, PG-7V grenades, and PG-7VM. The preceding instructions are based on the assertion that the M1 Abrams, including M1A1 and M1A2 variants, are well armored in the front, but inadequately armored in the sides and rear. In addition, Russian language publications advise striking the gasoline tanks, which are placed in the front on each side of the driver. This burning fuel is predicted to fall into the engine compartment, causing the engine to catch fire and explode. However, the M1 Abrams features a fire extinguishing system for the engine compartment, which consists of two bottles and many portable fire extinguishers. Furthermore, Russian critics proposed employing landmines to blow up the M1 Abrams, which would be a highly cost-effective approach. In October 2003, for example, an Abrams tank was destroyed by an anti-tank mine in Iraq, which was coupled with additional explosives and numerous 155mm detonating shells to amplify the impact. The explosion under the tank destroyed the turret and killed two American soldiers, marking the first casualties as a consequence of an enemy strike on an M1 tank. To confront ground mines, the M1 was outfitted with mine plows that pushed mines out of the line of the tanks, allowing other armored vehicles to follow. In addition, the Russian commentator made many suggestions for ambushing tank columns, such as forming special armor-piercing squads comprised of machine gunners and snipers to protect soldiers covering enemy tanks. The Russian army was hesitant to offer foot soldiers with its main battle tanks in Ukraine, which was the reason for Russia's huge tank losses. Furthermore, the Russian military encourages current levels, including basements and first or third floors of buildings, to fire five to six bullets from diverse directions at the tank's top, sides, and rear part. Indeed, the main battle tank M1A1 General Abrams, as well as its modifications M1A1A and M1A2, has high frontal projection protection, which is about 550 to 770 m of feathered armor-piercing subcaliber, projectiles, and about 800, 1110 of cumulative weapons. However, we are talking about the most protected area reservation, which is less than 50% of the front projection of the tank. In all other areas, tank defeat is not difficult for skilled fighters who are aware of weak armor zones. In addition, the test data of M1A1 NA tanks with reinforced armor using depleted uranium show that the armor protection data given in open sources are greatly exaggerated, and for this modification, it is no more than 550 to 600 M at a distance of 1,000 M against subshell shells, feathered armor-piercing caliber, and about 800 millimeters of cumulative guns.
With these reports circulating, it seems that Ukraine has a new problem. Whether tanks can function efficiently in Ukrainian-Russian combat, and whether the tanks will be transferred to Ukraine by the U.S. After all, the report on the weakness of the Abrams tank is only a theoretical analysis. The real facts can only be disclosed on the ground. As a result of this investigation, a big question arises. Will the Abrams tanks that will be supplied to Ukraine have the same capabilities as the Abrams tanks previously faced by Russia, or are much better?